If you're someone that photographs beverage, I'm going to give you a tip that's going to take your photography to the next level. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and if this is your first time here, my name is Dan Quintero and I'm a commercial photographer based in Sydney and today I wanted to make a video, it's going to be a short video and unscripted, but I wanted to talk about something that I've seen people do in other videos when they're making composites of beverage drinks. Now specifically I'm not talking about wine bottles and stuff like that, so wine bottles are pretty standard when it comes to shooting those, they're typically shot on a plain backdrop and the thing about wine bottles is that Typically, there's a, there's a formula for, for shooting wine, and that is that you get a couple of strip boxes on either side, so you get a nice reflection on the sides, and then you just make sure that you light the label, and that's it. The other great thing about wine manufacturers is that typically you'll get a case of, say, 20, 30 different types of wines from the same manufacturer, the same vineyard, but typically they were going to use the same bottle. Even the, the different types of wines, the bottle shape never changes, and so it becomes really easy because you just set up the lights for the first bottle and then all you got to do is once you've got that dialed in you just keep swatching, uh, switching the bottles and you can just go through 30 shots of three uh, of different wines and you can do that very quickly but when it comes to spirits um, it's a little bit different because typically with spirits they're not marketed, they're not advertised in the same way as they are with wine. There's a more, lot more production and usually there's a little bit of a set built around a spirit or sometimes they will ask you to shoot things in location. Now, shooting things in location can be a little bit tricky. You, uh, you need to organize things such as uh, permits and you just, um, it just, it just becomes more complicated. And so a lot of the time that is why we go to composites. Now, when we are photographing all the different parts, all the different components for the composites later on, we need to make sure that we work on the backdrop first. Typically what people will do is they will shoot the bottle first and then work out what the backdrop is. And what I'm going to suggest to you is that you go the other way around. Find out what your backdrop is going to be and then lock that in. Once you know what your backdrop is, it's going to make things a lot easier. Plus, when you are lighting your bottle, the lighting for the bottle is going to be heavily influenced depending on the backdrop. So in this case, uh, the photograph that I've got on screen at the moment, you can see that it's sort of dim lighting. It's a, it's a, a bar that's very dim and it's kind of a warm, there's a warm tone to it. And so that's going to uh, influence the lighting on the bottle. It's not going to be very bright. It's going to be a little bit warmer and so forth. So you need to make sure that you know that you know what the backdrop is going to be like. And this is uh, across different composites, by the way. If you're shooting uh, a model uh, and you're going to be doing a composite, you always shoot the backdrop first because you can't influence to a certain degree, well, most of the time, you cannot influence what the backdrop is going to be. If you're shooting something outside, you can't control the sun. So what you can do, though, is once you have the photograph, then you can simulate that lighting in the studio so that it matches the backdrop. Hope that that makes sense. Now, one of the biggest things that you need to account for though is when you're shooting uh, a spirit bottle, such as this one here, is that the bottle typically is going to be transparent. So you're going to be able to see the backdrop through the bottle. And that, create, that creates a little bit of a challenge. And what most people do is once they have the, uh, the backdrop, they will have to distort the view through the bottle because obviously this bottle they will distort vision uh, and light coming through the bottle itself because they, they've got you know they're all different shapes and depending on the shape of the bottle you're going to have to distort it in different ways and most people will do this inside of photoshop using something like the liquify tool the thing is that even though you're distorting the image you don't actually know what the image would look like in real life and so trying to simulate that, uh, sometimes it just doesn't come across as real. So the one thing that I'm going to suggest that you do is that when you have your backdrop locked in and you know what that backdrop is going to be, that when you shoot the photograph, that you make a large printout of the backdrop, such as this one. Now this is the, te the technique that I used for the image that I showed you earlier, the one that I've got on the thumbnail. Um, so you can see that the backdrop is not really, I mean, it's, it's not, um, it, I mean, it's, it's just a backdrop of a bar here, okay? Now, this goes behind the bottle when I'm shooting the bottle. So 
I will light the bottle, which will naturally light the background. And you're going to be able to see that through the bottle. Now, something to keep in mind is that when you are doing this, and this works really well, you can also have uh, transparencies that are much more expensive, um, where it's a sort of transparency, and then you have a soft box behind it, lighting it through the transparency. But honestly, you can get away with something like this, and the uh, you can almost, I think it's just as good, to be honest. Um, now, the one thing that you need to remember is that when you are photographing the backdrop, let me just get it so that you don't get a reflection. You can see it there. You can see that this photograph was taken out of focus. And that's obviously deliberate because when you are doing the composite, the backdrop is supposed to be out of focus. And so what I do is I make sure that I get um, some in-focus shots of the same, of the same uh, backdrop, but then I gradually get it more and more out of focus so that I get different types of, uh, of uh, bokeh sizes that I can then play around with uh, when I'm doing it in post. You can do this in post. So you can do things like a Gaussian blur in Photoshop, but it never quite looks as real as it does when you do it the, the real way. Um, the other thing is, that people ask me is, well, I don't have a big printer, so I can't do this. Yes, you can, because I've got the whole backdrop in here. But if I know that my bottle is going to go about there, all I need is that part of the backdrop. And so I can get away with something such as uh, just an A4 sheet of paper. And all you need is just a color printer. Don't forget that this, whatever this printout is, it's going to be behind the bottle, so it's going to be heavily distorted. So even if you use a simple inkjet printer, it's going to look much more real than if you go in to Photoshop and start playing around with the liquify uh, tool and just, you know, distorting things artificially. Uh, it's never going to look as good as the real thing. So anyway, look, that is something that I have found that's made a huge difference and it saved me time as well. That's probably a good 40 minutes of saving um, without having to go in and, and doing that distortion manually. And it's always going to look real as well. So that's the thing that I wanted to share with you. I think it makes a big difference. Hopefully that is something that you can introduce into your process. And um, if you do and, uh, and you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give the video a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so because I make videos like this every week to help you with your photography. And so if you don't want to miss out on any of those, click the subscribe button and the notification bell and that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you have any questions, also make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, that is the best place to get in touch with me. Otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms and you're going to find all those links in the description. So again, um, a bit of a freestyle video here, very unscripted, but I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.